In Indiana off its upset of Duke, facing the team that upset them in the first round last year, Kent State, the winner, is in the Final Four. To Lexington we go. Mike Davis looking to get the Hoosiers back in the Final Four. Last time was 92. Trevor Huffman, can you say Cinderella? Dane Fife, can you say three-pointer? Five of six from three-point range. Fife again, the Hoosiers came out firing from three-point range. Kyle Hornsby's not Bruce, but he has range. Then Jared Odell, six players with three-pointers for Indiana. They were up 12-3. They hit the their first four threes. They're not done. Hornsby again. 16 points for Hornsby, one of four Hoosiers in double figures. Tom Coverdale knocks down a three. 17 points for Tom Coverdale again from downtown. And then A.J. Moye off the bench. Guess what? Another three. Indiana hits its first eight three-pointers. Coach Stan, he's trying to regroup his team. They trail by 20 in the first half. Trevor Hoffman. Just two of seven from the field. Kent State on a 10-zip run, down just eight, but they were down 11. Hoffman runs over Coverdale, called for the charge. Coverdale angry, so is he. He thought it should have gone the other way. Indiana goes back outside the arc. Jared Jeffries. Hoosiers were 15 and 19 from three-point range. Fife again, a good look. He had 17. Indiana up by 20 again, but a bad moment for Indiana here. Coverdale driving, and he'll step on the foot of Eric Thomas and turn his left ankle. It's a bad sprain for Coverdale. X-rays were negative. He's a spectator. Just over three minutes left. Hornsby, great diving stop to fight for the hoop. Hoffman's final college game. Just eight points as he fouls out. Coverdale, bad ankle and all, gets his part of the net. And Mike Davis and Indiana are in the Final Four. Davis, in just his second year as a head coach, is in the Final Four. The Hoosiers shooting 78.9% from three-point range, the fourth highest percentage ever in an NCAA tournament game. Indiana making its first Final Four appearance since 1992. I was so nervous about the game. Um, my stomach was all in knots, and I didn't want to show it to my guys. I was trying to act cool. But this is a big, big day for Indiana basketball. We tried different things. We, we tried to uh, stop Jeffries. We tried to uh, tighten up on the shooters. And we even tried zone for a couple possessions. And it just seemed like nothing was working. I'm so thankful to President Brand. I could never show him how much I appreciate the opportunity. And I thought about it last night. We won a game that I would give him the game ball. Something to always remember. Um, the coach that he trusted with a great program um, came through for him. Nice words by Mike Davis. Indiana will try to become the first team from the South region to win the NCAA title since Kentucky, all the way back in 1998. Indiana, number five seed, is the fourth number five seed to advance to the Final Four. None previous, though, went on to win the national championship. Steve? Linda, we're headed out west in San Jose. Kelvin Sampson in Oklahoma coming in winners of eight straight over in Missouri. The stakes were high here. Kareem Rush drive in the fake as his defender fell. Rush was able to connect. Missouri was down 14-11. Late in the first, Oklahoma down one. Hollis Price pulling up, drilling a three in the face of the D. Oklahoma up two. Under two minutes to play in the half. Clarence Gilbert, the drive, trying to draw the contact. Couldn't do that and couldn't get the shot to go. Would go out of bounds. Off the inbound. Gilbert from three. No good. That was the story of the game for him. One of 16 from the floor. Five seconds left in the half. Price at the buzzer gets the three. Oklahoma up 41-33 at the break. Early in the second half, off the turnover. Oklahoma's running, and Jabari Brown is finishing. Nice feed from Qantas White. Brown at seven points. Lead down to six. Price bringing it up and pulling it up. Price at 18. Oklahoma was up 54-45. Down at the other end, Ricky Paulding gets the first step and the hard one-handed slam. Missouri within five. Paulding down the middle. Look out below. Paulding at 22. Under three minutes left. Missouri's down six. Swinging around a rush for three. Got it. Missouri down three. Rush had 17. But that was as close as they would get. The other end, Price to an open Aaron McGee. Lead back to six. 
and that would be your final margin, 81-75. Sooners hit 7 of 14 from three-point land to clinch their first Final Four berth since 1988. Head coach Kelvin Sampson had three NCAA tournament wins in seven appearances before this one. He has four in this appearance. So don't call them pretty boys. The Sooners become the first team from the Big 12 to advance to the Final Four. I don't think it was an ugly win. You know, we scored 81 points. And scoring 80 points, is it shouldn't be ugly. The ugly thing about it, that we had so many fouls called on us, that's the ugly thing about it. Don't contribute to our demise. That's really important for our program. You have to make your free throws. Whether another team makes their free throws, that's of no concern to us. We have to make our free throws. We have to take care of the basketball for us. They you know, capitalize on you know, everyone, our mistakes. And, you know, we're not ashamed that we lost. You know, we lost to a great team there. You know, but our team had a you know, great effort. If past history means anything, and quite often it doesn't, but Oklahoma doesn't have much to look forward to since not. East Region Final, UConn and Maryland. Karan Butler hoping to take the Huskies back to the Final Four for the first time since 99. First half tied at 20. Butler on the alley. Johnny Selby freaking the oop. Selby had seven. Two minutes left in the first. Terps up one. Lonnie Baxter. You want the definition of a tough two? There it is. Baxter 13 in the first half. Terps up four. Time winding down in the first. Taj hold lone three to beat the buzzer. Holla! UConn's largest de deficit the entire tournament. They were down 44-37. Second half, Baxter, some more tough love off the glass. He was also, also 15 of 18 from the free throw line. Terps up six, but Butler's got some mad skills. Follow a jumper. Shorty only scored six points in the first half, but in the second half, you got to drop that like it's hot. He came in averaging 26 points this tournament. Huskies a one-point lead. Chris Wilcox getting some bunnies on a Baduka dunk. He had 13 Terps up two. Terps down to Juan Dixon. Nice fake. Money. Only player in college history with 2,100 points, 300 steals, 200 three-pointers, and then Dixon takes it to the house. 10 of 18 shooting. We're tied at 62. UConn down one. Ben Gordon, the touch pass to Amika Okafor. I got you Okafor right here, Steve. Six points, six boards. Huskies up two now. Huskies down one. Okafor. Huge block on Steve Blake. Butler on the other end. Karan Butler was just holding it down. 32 points, 9 of 13 shooting. Huskies take the lead again. Under four left. Terps down three. Dixon, 4-3. Right in Talik Brown's grill. Dixon at 27, third leading scorer in Terp history. 2-10 left. Baxter, turnaround. Play up, please. 29 points, nine boards. Maryland playing its 2,000th game in school history. Up two. Steve Blake, had not hit a bucket the entire game. Booyah for the three. Only bucket in the game. Terps go up six, and Terps are going to the final four. They win it 90 to 82, and they end UConn's 12-game winning streak. Second consecutive trip to the final four for Maryland. Lonnie Baxter at those 29 points. Juan Dixon has scored at least 25 in three of the four tournament games so far this year. Karan Butler leads all players who reached at least the regional semis with 26.5 points per game, but his Huskies fall to one in five all time in elite eight games. It's a special season, and I, even right now, I, I, the one thing I'm gonna hate tomorrow morning is uh, waking up knowing there's not a practice. And sometimes at the end of a season, you don't always feel that way. I'm gonna feel that way. Uh, this team has really been special to me. We've had people tell us that, you know, they got their tickets for Atlanta because we're going to the Final Four. They told us that in September. And uh, there's been that pressure all year, so to get back there is a great feeling for the players. I, I could see it today walking off the court, the relief. You know, it, there, there was joy, but there's also relief in that situation. So who's coming out of the Midwest? Would it be Kansas or would it be Oregon? Fellas. Whatever happened in this game, I want to look in your eyes and I want to see that passion and see that fire. Let's play. Let's play and just enjoy it and let's get after it. Let's go. Let's get the Atlanta. Get it done and get to Atlanta. Final four on three. One, two, three. Final four. Let's go. Go. Except Roy Williams and Kansas were standing in their way. First half, Kansas by six. Nick Collison, the pass to Drew Gooden, reverse jam. Later in the first half, Ducks are down 10. Anthony Lieber. 
grabbing the loose ball. The pass ahead of Freddie Jones all by himself for the jam. The Ducks were down eight. Two possessions later. Things tightening up. Luke Ridnour, the steal. Pushing, pushing, and now dishing to Jones for the emphatic jam. Ducks were down three. Next Oregon possession. Jones knocking down the three. We're tied at 40, and here we go. Late in the first half, Jayhawks by four. Aaron Miles, the pass inside to Collison. He had 15 at the half. We played our asses off to get back in this game and have them right there. And we're still right there, but if you just understand, that team is getting tired. They are getting tired. I was tired just watching the first half. Ridenauer, long alley-oop to Jones for the jam. Jones had 30, the Ducks down four. Gooden, the miss. Collison is there to tip home the rebound. That was the story of the game. Here come the Ducks. Lever from three. I said Lever from three. Ducks were down five. But it's all Kansas down the stretch. Good and missage. Keith Langford, one of the unheralded players for them, the follow jam. Jeff Boshi misses, but that's okay. Collison there for the putback. Collison at 25 and 15. Kansas by 14. Miles misses the jumper. Great interior passing by Kansas. Collison finishes. Jayhawks out rebound Oregon. 61 31. Roy Williams and Kansas going to the Final Four. It's okay to feel hurt because you're a warrior and you played your tail off all year long. Just an incredible, incredible year and an incredible run for this institution and for yourselves. Allow yourself to hurt a little bit and you need to get over the hurt. And you need to feel good, you need to feel proud because you are truly one outstanding basketball team. And I mean that too. You captivated the country, you played your tails off for us, you played hard, you did everything we asked you to do to get us to this point. And my tears are not because we lost, because we'll get a chance to play. Because coaches really work hard to get to the point of having teams like you guys, where all you care about is winning. You play with your inner spirit, you play with your heart. I hope we can duplicate this again, because it's just incredible for me. To see that, to see guys do that, come together like that. Wow, that's powerful stuff. Ernie Kent is my new favorite college basketball coach in the country. It'll be the 11th Final Four appearance for Kansas, fifth most of any school, third Final Four under Roy Williams, and their first since 93. Gooden had his third 20-rebound game of the season. Get this, he and Collison out-rebounded all the Ducks all by themselves, 35 to 34. And the Jayhawks grabbed 26 offensive rebounds, leading to 31 second-chance points. Now, another chance for Coach Williams in Kansas. You, know, you got to coach a lot of heat for not uh, reaching some goals that you know that we haven't reached in the past, and I think it's just a bunch of crap because <laughs> Coach Williams is a great coach. This team this year, I've uh, I've enjoyed the heck out of this team since I think October 13th was our first day of practice, and we've had a goal to to make it to Atlanta. Uh, that was going to be our goal if we had to say it after a first round loss to Holy Cross. We would have been tough enough and man enough to stand up and say it. So Kansas goes to the Final Four for the third time under Roy Williams. Lynn Greer is Cheney's leading scorer, averaging better than 23 for the season and 32 a game in the NIT before he turned his ankle against Louisville. Greer's been on crutches since, but wanted to play Tuesday against Memphis in the Garden, and it would have helped. But coach said, uh-uh. Quoting Cheney, this kid has earned a place in the NBA. I wouldn't take a chance of ruining him, of playing him, excuse me, and ruining his chances. To the Garden we go. Remember when these guys used to hate each other, Calipari and Cheney? They're all good. And there's Lynn Greer, not playing. Second half, tied at 74. This is a good ball game. Brian Polk, a wide open look from three. And he gives the Ailes from Pemple and Foley a lead. Moments later, Tigers down three. Dewan Wagner, who just went off, off glass, ties a career high with 32. Now under 25 left. Wani with a drive, draws everybody, finds Kelly Wise for two of his six. Memphis takes the lead by one. Last shot for Temple. David Hawkins kind of gets trapped in the corner. Nowhere to go, nowhere to go. Got to put it up on the rim, and he does, and he gets his own board. That doesn't go. Kevin Lott has a chance at the buzzer, and it doesn't go down, and Memphis sends John Chaney home.
Memphis also beat Temple by 10 this year at Temple, but Wagner had only 15. That's in Philly near Camden. Maybe he was a little nervous. Here he was 12 of 18 from the floor, including 5 of 6 from three-point range. I see ping pong balls in his future. Temple led by senior Alex Wesby's game-high 25. Memphis awaiting the winner of... Scott, that would be Syracuse and South Carolina. Now, South Carolina, the home team, they're wearing all white, but why is Syracuse wearing all white, too? There was some confusion. So, you know, uh, they got the orange jerseys, went back to the hotel, they made the switch in the middle of the game. But look at this, color coordinated, the top orange, the bottom white, they didn't want to drop their shorts. Preston yeah. Shumpert, meanwhile, having a good game. Then at the half, they made it a complete orange outfit. Second half, just over three minutes left. Did I really say dropping shorts on you, TV? Game pops up six, orange firing back to Sean Williams. Finding Akeem Warwick for the slam. The Orange down two, but the Gamecocks punch right back. Chuck Edison finding Mr. Howell and South Carolina, who had never been past the quarterfinal round of any national tournament, is in the final of the NIT. Aaron Lucas scoring a season-high 20 points. The Gamecocks shooting 50% from beyond the arc. With 344 remaining, the Orange trailed by two, and Shumpert had scored more than half his team's points with 28. He finished with that total, going scoreless in the final 441. So it's he says he hasn't thought about turning pro and is getting tired of being asked about it. His father, Milt, says it's not about the money, it's about if he's ready. Dad also says that while Dewan could be one or two next year, he might get the chance to play for a better team by leaving now. Oh yeah, Memphis and South Carolina, they had a, they had a basketball game also, NIT Finals. We go to the Garden, we go into the Showcase, and if it's the last game, Coach Calipari, what do you think? Should he go? Should he stay? What? If he goes to the NBA, I think he'll do fine. The question is, you know, Marcus Camby went through this his sophomore year. Do I go now or do I come back and do I go one, two, or three? Marcus Camby never hung a hundy. <laughs> Scouting report, well, can he play the point? That's a question. He doesn't have to play the point, and maybe he's not going to want to. Here he hangs on to it a little bit too long, picks up his second foul the first half, had to go to the bench. How about the ability to score? Well, I just mentioned he hung a hundy, mm -hmm. him and Wilt. Well, that's, that's unquestioned. Four seconds to go in the first half. NBA range, lights, camera, action. South Carolina coach Dave Odom, tackle him. Don't let the man shoot. How does he get up? Watch the little subtle head fake. I'm going to go this way. No, no, I'm not. Oh, son. And it's black. That put Memphis up six. They didn't look back. Second half, Wagner showing off the ability to create his own shot. Got to respect the range from out here. Dribble drive, hang, and hit. He's strong, big fella. Memphis up eight. Incidentally, there was, as I mentioned, a game. Mentioned the three-point range. Well, in case any of the GMs or scouts had gone to hit the head before halftime and left before this, I can shoot it from Brooklyn. Give me all three of them. Memphis stretching it out. 107 points in five NIT games. Your tournament MVP, who else? Wani. And I should mention, Earl Barron for Memphis, 9 of 9 in the first half, on the way to 25 points for Memphis. First time he topped 20 all year. Memphis beats their old Metro Conference rivals for the seventh consecutive time. Orlando Howell led the way for USC, but they shot just 34% from the field and 44% from the line. Back to Wagner. He caps off the highest scoring season in Memphis history.